Welcome to our second lesson in this course and the first lesson on companies. A company is usually referred to as a legal entity or person as it can enter into legal contracts in its own capacity and it can be sued without affecting the owners. In this lesson, we are going to introduce a company, the common ledger or T accounts used by companies, their classification and how they are affected by transactions. Some persons that make up a company are shareholders, directors, internal auditors, independent auditors, and sales. Shareholders are people who own the company. These are people who have bought shares in the company. Directors are people who are appointed by the shareholders to run the company. Directors are usually appointed in the annual general meeting, also referred to as AGM. An internal auditor is usually the person who is employed by a company and supervises the preparation of the company's financial statements. Independent auditors or external auditors are auditors who express an opinion on the financial statements in an audit report but do not work for the company. External auditors usually come from audit firms such as Deloitte and PwC. South African Revenue Services, also referred to as SARS, is the government department to whom the company must pay income tax on the profits and VAT when it's due. Basically, SARS is the taxman. These are the most common general ledger or T accounts used by companies. The ledger accounts are the ordinary share capital, SARS income tax, shareholders for dividends, income tax, ordinary share dividends, and appropriation account. The first two accounts are the most commonly asked company ledger accounts in past metric papers. We shall go into more detail on each of these ledger accounts in the following slides. The ordinary share capital account is an equity account. An equity account increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. The account represents an accumulation of capital contributions by shareholders. This is done through buying of shares in the company. When shareholders buy shares, their equity in the company increases, and when the company buys back shares from shareholders, their equity in the company decreases. So when a company issues shares, the two accounts affected are bank and ordinary share capital. Bank is an asset, and because when shareholders buy shares in the company, they pay cash to the company, the company's money or bank increases, thus the bank asset will be debited, showing an increase. Ordinary share capital is an equity account and increases on the credit side. When shareholders buy shares, their equity or wealth in the company increases because they now own a part of the company. Thus, the ordinary share capital will be credited when the company issues shares. Ordinary share capital is an equity account. As mentioned in the first lesson of this course, equity represents the owner's wealth in the business. In this case, when shareholders buy shares in the company, their equity increases, and this happens on the credit side. When the company buys back shares from shareholders, their equity or wealth in the business decreases, and this happens on the debit side. This is just a high-level introduction to company ledger accounts. But in the next lessons, we go a bit deeper by doing examples, some from past papers. SARS income tax is a liability account, and liability accounts increase on the credit side, and decrease on the debit side, referred to Ali method mentioned in lesson number one of this course. This account implies income tax owed to SARS. It is affected when SARS charges income tax on company profits, then the liability increases on the credit side. But when company makes payment to SARS, the liability decreases on the debit side. When a company makes payment to SARS, the two accounts affected are SARS income tax and bank. SARS income tax is a liability, and when the company pays SARS, they decrease the amount they owe SARS, thus the liability decreases on the debit side. Bank is an asset, and when they pay SARS, the money in the bank decreases, and asset decreases on the credit side. The SARS income tax liability account increases on the credit side when SARS charges tax to the company, increasing the liability or amount the company owes in terms of tax. The account decreases on the debit side when the company pays the money owed to SARS. So let's move on to the next T account, which is shareholders for dividends. Dividends is the sum of money paid regularly by a company to its shareholders out of its profits or reserves. 
Cholas for dividends is a liability account, and liability accounts increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. This is money or dividends owed to shareholders. When a company declares a dividend and do not pay the dividends on the same day, they owe shareholders money, and thus their liability is increasing. When a company pays the dividends owed, then the liability decreases. When a company declares dividends and does not pay them out on the same day, the two accounts affected are dividends declared and shareholders for dividends. The company owes shareholders money, thus liability increases on the credit side. Dividends declared is an account debited, and we are going to discuss it in more detail in the next few slides. Again, when a company declares dividends and does not pay them out on the same day, the company owes money to shareholders. Thus, the liability shareholders for dividends increases on the credit side. And when the company pays the dividends owed, this liability decreases on the debit side. Dividends, as stated in the above slide, is the sum of money paid regularly by a company to its shareholders out of its profits or reserves. Therefore, a company can declare a dividend and pay it out in later dates. As mentioned above, it gives rise to a liability named shareholders for dividends. The ordinary share dividends account is debited on the day that the company declares dividends. More like an expense account, which increases on the debit side, but it is not an expense. The account increases on the debit side when dividends are declared and decreases on the debit side when we close it off to the appropriation account. We shall go into more detail of closing entries later and it shall be more evident when doing our first example. For now, know that the account debited when the company declares dividends is the ordinary shared dividends account. So when a company declares dividends to shareholders and does not pay the dividends on the same day, the two accounts affected are ordinary shared dividend and shareholders for dividends. Ordinary shared dividend is debited and shareholders for dividends, which is a liability, is credited as we owe money to shareholders. I repeat, the ordinary shared dividends account is the account debited on the day that the company declares dividends to shareholders. Repeat after me three times. The ordinary shared dividends account is the account debited on the day that the company declares dividends to shareholders. The ordinary shared dividends account is the account debited on the day the company declares dividends to shareholders. The ordinary shared dividends account is the account debited on the day the company declares dividends to shareholders. I hope you get that now. The income tax account is an expense account. Expenses increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. If you still don't know this, refer to Ali Ali method. This amount is usually determined at the end of the financial year, where the company calculates the tax payable on the company's profits, usually 28% of the company's profit in South Africa. The two accounts affected when SARS charges income tax to the business are the income tax account and the SARS income tax account. Income tax account is an expense account and will be debited as our expenses are increasing. As discussed above, the SARS income tax account is a liability and will increase on the credit side as this is the income tax owed to SARS. Income tax account increases on the debit side and when SARS charges income tax to the business, our expenses are increasing. This account will thereby decrease on the credit side when we close it off to the appropriation account. This will be discussed in more detail later on. Appropriation account is an account used to distribute profits for the year between income tax for the year, dividends declared, and the balance goes to retained earnings. Let's see the format of the appropriation account on the next page and what goes into the appropriation account. The appropriation account has the profit for the year on the credit side. We thus close off the income tax and ordinary share dividends to this account and they sit on the debit side. The balancing figure goes to retained earnings. This shows that the company's profits for the year is divided into three portions. First, going to cover income tax expense. Secondly, covering dividends declared. And lastly, the balance is kept in retained earnings. What is retained earnings? Retained earnings serves as a reserve account, or you might say a savings account. It represents the accumulation of past undistributed profits. 
meaning the balance remaining after distributing profits for the year to income tax and dividends is kept in retained earnings and can be used in future years for other projects. As mentioned above, retained earnings is an equity account and increases on the credit side. When there are undistributed profits at the end of the year, the retained earnings account increases on the credit side. When this cash is used in later years, it decreases the account on the debit side. The decrease can be due to part of the amount paid when the company buys back shares from shareholders.